Greetings from Christ Church in Greenville, South Carolina. My name is Scott Fleischer, and I serve as one of the associate priests here. Today is the seventh Sunday after the Epiphany. We begin our worship today with a lesson from Luke chapter 6. Jesus said, I say to you that listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you, if anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you. And if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. If you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love your enemies. Do good and lend, expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High, for he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you take back. The word of the Lord. Today's Gospel lesson is a continuation of Jesus' Sermon on the Plain. We heard how last week Jesus flipped the script and turned the world upside down. He assured the poor of blessing and warned the rich of judgment. This was good news for the early Christian community since they were generally poor and their enemies who had persecuted them were generally rich. But today's passage from that sermon is not a feel-good message for anyone. It's addressed to you that listen. You have to smile at that because the message that follows is easy to dismiss. It's easy to ignore because it's so hard to accept. Right after he validates the Christian community by promising God's blessing, he goes on to tell them that there is no place for vengeance in the church. Just because the rich had persecuted them didn't mean that they had a right to take revenge. It's really shocking because it goes against our natural impulse. Instead of taking vengeance on them, Jesus commands his disciples to love them, to forgive their enemies. To bring home his point, this message is repeated three more times, then illustrated four ways, and then summed up with the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Once again, he is turning things upside down. Conventional wisdom dictates that one should do harm to one's enemies and do good to one's friends. But just loving our circle of friends is not enough, according to Jesus. Our friends are easy to love. That's why they're our friends. We like them. What's more, we can expect them to love us in return. So, who are our enemies and how should we love them? In Luke's context, these were the people who persecuted the early church for their faith. Today, we may think of our enemies as those people who slander us, people who badmouth us, who insult us. Loving them, being merciful, and forgiving those who slander us is counterintuitive and countercultural. It goes against our common sense. But we're encouraged to do so because these reflect God's character. Our motivation to emulate our Lord's character is based on the principle that children are like their parents. Jesus says, your reward will be great, and you will be called children of the Most High, for he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Ch 
children are expected to grow into the image of their parents, just as disciples are expected to follow the example of their teachers. Jesus gives some advice for how we should show love for our enemies. We need to love them completely by our actions, in our thoughts, and through our prayers for them. In terms of our specific actions, he says, if anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you. And if anyone takes your goods, do not ask for them again. He's saying that we are to love to the point of sacrificing our welfare, our possessions, and even our pride. As unrealistic as Jesus' words may seem to us, there are at least two examples from Scripture where we see people living this out. Joseph showed mercy to his brothers while living in Egypt, and Jesus himself did so toward the Jewish leaders during the week of his passion. Joseph was the 11th son of Jacob. He was born to him in his old age. That made him his father's favorite. When Joseph was 17, his father had a fancy robe made for him as a sign of his special favor. This gift caused his older brothers to be very jealous of him. Each day that he walked around wearing that robe made them feel like he was thumbing his nose at them. Their relationship became even more strained when Joseph told them about two of his dreams. Each dream indicated that he would be their master. They would bow down to him and serve him. This made them so mad that they wanted to kill him. Fortunately, his older brother Reuben intervened and convinced the other brothers to fake Joseph's death. Instead of killing them, killing him, they sold him to Egyptian traders. How many of you are the youngest child in your family? I'm the youngest of four boys, and I always felt sorry for poor Joseph. I can totally see how something like that could happen in my family. After Joseph was sold into slavery, he spent the next several years of his life living in Egypt. A drought had resulted in two years of famine in the land of Canaan. Jacob sent his sons to Egypt to find relief. It had been many years since they had seen their brother Joseph. By now, he had become a very prominent man. In his words, he had become a father to Pharaoh and lord over all his house and ruler over all the land of Egypt. He was a really big deal. In fulfillment of his dreams, his brothers were now bowing down before him, hat in hand, begging for food. The tables had turned. Joseph now had the power to seek revenge for the way that his brothers had mistreated him. His story reminds us of today's gospel lesson. Jesus said, If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you. And if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Well, Joseph's brothers did most of those things to him. They stripped him of his cloak, beat him up, and threw him in a dry cistern to keep him from escaping. And then they sold him into slavery. Now they were bowing before him in desperate need. And now he had his opportunity to take his revenge. He had the power to throw them into prison, force them into slavery, and even take their lives if he chose to. He could have, but he didn't. Instead of flexing his muscles and getting vengeance, Joseph was obedient to God's will. He understood that the Lord had done all this for a purpose. He had put him in this position of power so that he could provide for his extended family, the children of Israel. Just as the Lord had done with his forefather Abraham, he had blessed him so that he might bless others. Jesus also had enemies. The Pharisees and Sadducees plotted to kill him. They paid one of his disciples, Judas, to betray him. They also convinced false witnesses to testify against him during his trial before the Sanhedrin. After having been rejected by his own people, he was handed over to the secular authorities. They stripped him of his clothes, mocked him as the so-called king of the Jews, and flogged him severely. Finally, he was crucified, nailed to the cross to slowly die. And yet, after his betrayal, as he hung from the cross, Jesus forgave his enemies. He said, Father, forgive them. 
but they do not know what they are doing. In today's lesson, we read, I say to you who will listen, love your enemies. Jesus and Joseph modeled unconditional love to us by doing just that. They forgave their enemies. In Ephesians chapter 4, Paul elaborates on this same theme. He writes, Put away from you all bitterness, wrath, anger, and wrangling, and slander, together with all malice, and be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ has forgiven you. That's really the key, isn't it? Forgive as God has forgiven you. When we recognize how much we have been forgiven, we're filled with gratitude. When we know the joy of that freedom which forgiveness brings, we're inspired to share it with others. What Jesus is asking us to do seems unrealistic. It's hard. Most people love their friends and hate their enemies. Loving our enemies is a huge risk. It may mean a lot of personal sacrifice. But then again, choosing to not retaliate when others do us wrong can break the cycle of violence. And even if it doesn't change the hearts of our enemies, it has the potential of setting us free from our own hatred. In 1 Corinthians, Paul tells the believers, you were bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body. We too have been bought with a price. The blood of Jesus has been ransomed for our sins. How we live from this point on is up to us. Will we live lives of bitterness, hating our enemies and seeking vengeance? Or will we choose to glorify God by forgiving others just as we have been forgiven?